All right, so I just got to work from Knott's Berry Farm. I saw a couple of pretty cool things that I kind of want to talk to you guys about. So let's go ahead and head down to the cave and get all this stuff unraveled. That is correct. We saw some significant things pop up in a couple of the mazes that have yet to be named. May not mean anything at all, but regardless, we're going to take a couple stabs at what they could possibly be. But before any of that, let's get some of this housekeeping out of the way. Yesterday, Saturday, August 12th, uh, Knott's held their job fair for blackout and guest control. If you are unaware when any of that is, the guest control are the people that stand inside the maze uh, in the black shrouds with the red wands that will kind of guide people that are going through the mazes from room to room if you've ever been in any of these mazes especially the high production mazes that at universal or knots or six flags uh, it can get pretty discombobulating with all the strobe lights and stuff that go on in there so those guys come in clutch sometimes also sometimes um when some people get a little too nervous in there those guys are good for unnecessary boost scares as well um, they are also the people that are standing outside the ropes and stanchions, guiding people on which way to go through the lines. If you've ever been to Knott's, you know, that place can get pretty ridiculous with where you need to go. Having the guest control there really can make a difference. So those guys are the unsung heroes of these events. Also, if you haven't gotten Knott's tickets yet, Obviously, everything is on sale. The general admission tickets are starting at $59.99. Um, they have the ticket and meal combination plan, which is the meal pass inside the park. And those are starting at $74.99. The all-inclusive single night tickets are starting at $199.99. They still have the season pass that it's on sale. That's going for $149. Fright and Fast Lane, most people's favorite. That's starting at $145. The buffet is starting at $45. And uh, the very important monster tour is starting at five fifty. Keep in mind the prices that are posted here are generally for Wednesdays and Thursdays. Um, if you want to go on a weekend, those are generally fifty to seventy five dollars more. So plan accordingly if you're buying more than one ticket at a time. Also, walking around the park, I'm noticing a lot more lighting and speakers are up uh, around most of the places uh, through Ghost Town near uh, where the Calico River Rapids are. Camp Snoopy, Fiesta Village. So everything's slowly but surely starting to make its way into view, which is just more and more reason to get excited. Outside on Market Street, uh, if you've been out there recently, you've noticed that the Legacy Store has put up the uh, decal graphics on the windows now. It's got a lot of Knott's haunt history on there, a lot of iconic characters and really cool visuals that represents all 50 years that this event has been going on. You've got your Sinister Seymour up there, Elvira's up there, the Green Witch is in there. Really, really cool, iconic characters. Now, on August 25th, when this store is going to be open to the general public, uh, during the park hours, they will have the entrance from Market Street. So you'll be able to enter for on Market Street there and visit the store. However, reiterating what I think we've said before, once Scary Farm opens, those park hours from 7 p.m. to 1 or 2 a.m., your only entrance is going to be from inside the park it's, uh, itself. I kind of wandered around a little bit looking for explanations on how they're going to have people enter and exit that store during Scary Farm hours. Uh, I looked at a couple different angles and I'm not really sure how they're going to do it yet. I did notice that the warehouse next to Waxworks line uh, was open. Now that could just be where they store all of those ropes and those stanchions. And they're just, they have the door propped open because they're keeping them out. I'm assuming they're going to funnel people in the same way as they do Waxworks and kind of make the way around, maybe keeping them against the wall uh, as tight as possible because the, the entrance and the exit of Waxworks is a little shoddy. They have to kind of hold the line halfway through to have big groups of people exit kind of through the middle. Uh, so it, it when that line gets long, it gets really kind of confusing. They have it wrap around the outside of Ghost Rider and come back. The only place I could see the entrance to the Legacy Store is through a uh, open-aired kind of almost like back alley area. They've got the door open, but there's a lot of trash and stuff back there. I don't know if they're going to have that cleaned up, but they've got a lot of... I haven't noticed anything. I haven't seen anything um, as far as facades yet. I haven't seen any props or anything yet. So 
I have no idea how they're going to have people exit from there because it's so little. But they've got a plan, obviously. John Cook's not stupid. John Cook is a genius when it comes to this kind of stuff, and I have full faith in him. Looking in uh, where the old pumpkin eater maze was, that maze is gigantic. It's huge. This is rumored to be the anniversary maze. I want to say no, but there's so many people that hurt kind of against me on this just because the sheer size of this maze. I would hate for this maze to get disassembled at the end of the year, only to have to be completely rebuilt next year again. Granted, that's they have a whole year to do it, but I love the layout of this maze. It's huge, it's gigantic, and, it, and it's twisty and windy. And um, when I was looking through the, through the back there, I noticed these guys. If you were at the Midsummer Screen Panel or if you'd seen any videos of it on YouTube, you noticed they were kind of really leaning on spiders. Uh, I know that there's going to be a big interactive area with a queen spider somewhere probably over by the Calico River Rapids uh, or somewhere around, around there. Uh, with the Grimoire line, I don't know how that's going to work, but again, they'll make it happen. Um, so this could be some sort of giant spider cave which could mean that there's a possibility that that big interactive queen spider could be somewhere in the scare zone in Camp Snoopy, uh, down by the, the river or something like that. They have the room to put that there if they want to, but your guess is as good as mine as to what this maze is going to be, as to what the scare zone is going to be, because they aren't dropping too many hints. I just noticed the spiders, and remember, they talked a lot about spiders at the panel, so... The Boardwalk Ballroom, uh, they are doing a great job of keeping tight lips about that. Uh, looking through the, the, the exit door, it's just kind of the, the wood with the paint on it still. I personally think this is going to be the anniversary maze. If it were me, this would be where the anniversary maze is going to be because they, they because it's kind of in a, a really cool little iconic spot next to the log ride, next to the mine ride, and they have a lot more room for a queue than they do over at Pumpkin Eater. I really don't uh, have any hardcore explanations for it. It's just kind of my, it's my gut telling me that this is gonna be where the anniversary maze is. Over in the back, they still have the, uh, the faux brick panels and they got a lot of drywall up. So it looks like they're still building in there. I don't ever hear drills or hammers or anything inside that, but I've never heard drills or hammers inside there, so. Uh, over underneath Berry Tales in the arcade, uh, this little light fixture popped up. There was word and there were uh, very strong rumors a couple weeks back that this was going to be uh, a Goring 20s themed uh, casino, hotel, speakeasy kind of vibe. And that's kind of what this, whatever this is, fits into. It looks very old school. It looks in the times of the Goring 20s. And it's just kind of reinforcing those rumors a little bit, I think. The exit is still just brick wall. They're not gonna probably do much more with that. Uh, a lot of people are, are thinking that the queue is going to be on the other side of Johnny Rockets there through that back part, over the through the, the yellow fence. I don't think so. I still think that they're going to start wrapping people around the, um, basically the way they do with Mesmer, wrapping around the bumper cars along the back of the building and the entrance is gonna be back there somewhere. There's, I honestly have no idea how much space they have in that building. I know Berry Tales isn't a super huge footprint, so it's very possible that it won't be a huge maze, but what do I know? <laughs> as far as the shows, uh, there's still a lot of very thick rumors that The Hanging is coming back. Now, they hinted toward this at the panel in July, and I, I think it's all but a certainty now. They ended it so abruptly in 2019, and they did say that they wanted to take a break and I get why they ended it. I mean, this is the 50th year anniversary. If you're gonna bring it back, this is gonna be the year to bring it back. You bring back that Green Witch, you kind of take it back to its roots. Uh, as far as where it's going to be, uh, there are rumors that they're gonna bring it to the wagon camp up in the front of the park, which that's where I think they've got the best chance to make it happen. But I think they've got the space, they've got the setup for it, and the vibe inside that, uh, inside that little theater is just super cool. It's got potential to be um, a main draw on certain nights. And that I'm, I'm hoping for the wagon camp to be the spot where the, where the, the hanging lands. 
as far as the mind stage, um, I know they had the circus there, uh, I think the last couple of years, right? A lot of people are, you know, saying no Elvira, and they're probably right, no Elvira, but what if you bring back the Elvira um, show of the macabre or whatever? Elvira was like a, she was like a, 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 a circus master of like a freak show sort of thing, but it was a circus. Why not have the same circus show, just have um, Elvira hosted in a way? Uh, whether it be through video packages on the screens, maybe, uh, and I know this is blasphemy to a lot of people, uh, kind of a, a look-alike. Her figure is very iconic, with uh, most notably for the wig and the dress, and nothing else physical. So it's a possibility you can um, just have, you know, a, a body double come out and mime her actions, and maybe have, and maybe have Cassie Peterson just do some voiceover stuff uh, while she lip syncs to it. That, and I think that might be kind of a cool idea to do at, on that stage, just because you're kind of keeping the same vibe. You don't have to change too much of it. And you've already got that stage plot set for a circus anyway. They also are going to bring back the art exhibit that they had inside the factory store next to the arcade, uh, like they had last year and the year before. I think up on that wall you can go you can buy some of the art pieces I know a lot of people go and they like to collect those art pieces um, there were a couple last year that me and Andrea looked at that we were very interested in but never pulled the trigger mostly because we found one that we really liked but we rode the motorcycle that night and we had no way to get it home so that could be show number four if they decide to consider that a show again like they did last year Piece by piece, Knotts is getting closer and closer to the big night on August 24th. We won't have to speculate anymore, uh, but we will be able to go around and see if we can find all of the breadcrumbs that they've told us where they left. Uh, until the 24th, I'm going to keep my eyes peeled, my ears open, and I'm going to stay completely diligent to catch as many little breadcrumbs as I can. So, until then... I will see you next time.